During this video, we're going to continue our look at the function nodes, and probably the most powerful one is the actual function node that sat under the function category. And this node is designed so you can start putting Java expressions onto here, so you can start writing a little bit of code. Let's have a look at my my flow here, so we can see what what I've what I've done and how we're going to use this uh, function here to generate a JSON message and why we, we would do that. So the node here, I've got one inject, it's doing nothing other than injecting um, and, and energizing the rest of the flow for, for one second, every one second. Then I have four change nodes and each one of these is randomizing a value using the JSON expression and then pushing that value into global memory area. And, and that's the important part for for this uh, demo. I could have stopped there, but I've decided to to use the trigger node because we've already covered that in, in in other videos. And I've added a LED node to flash some LEDs on our dashboard. So let's have a look at what the trigger node is doing. Change node is receiving data. And because we're not moving it, we're setting it. Remember from previous videos, it, the message is coming through as well. And it's hitting here and we're polling every second. And then every half a second, I'm flashing an LED on my dashboard just to indicate that I've got data arriving. Nothing special, probably don't really need it. But I'm doing it to, to show you some of the function nodes working in tandem and then a visualization node that you have to download it's not part of um, node red if we have a look at our dashboard there you have it it's flashing away telling you you've got comms and very quickly i will so let's um, delete this one so it's not getting the trigger on one deploy and if i go back to my dashboard i can see here that data level one is uh, not flashing so I'll put that back in yeah this is just to, to to show you how you can use some of the trigger nodes don't forget to deploy so let's take a look how we use the function node to build up this JSON payload and we can drag and drop this into our flow we'll link it up with an inject this inject is a manual inject it's doing nothing more than pushing a topic through and then we'll just link it to a debug and if we open this up, we'll see here your function always ends with return message. So that's like the end of your code. And then it will push the, the output, um, the message out to the, to the output, the node. Hopefully that makes sense. So the first thing we'll give it a name and then we're going to give it a topic name. Once we've got a topic uh, name, we now need to move. If I just have a look at my context data here. We need to move this context data into a temporary memory location that this node can use. And all of the commands start off with var. We'll have a temporary memory location and we'll call that LV1 to keep the typing down. And then equals. We are trying to move data from global memory area. So we'll type in global. And now my expression builder comes into play. I can see here I've got two options, global set or global get, what well, we're getting information from, from uh, memory. Um, it puts in um, two inverted commas where we only really need one. So we do one and we are getting that from level one. Let's put that into my, by doing control V. So we're doing that four times because we've got four process values. So we'll put those in and we'll edit those and then we're ready to build up the uh, payload format. So I've built up my uh, temporary memory locations. I, I had a typo here, still have it. Can you see here I have level four. I need that to be level four. So I, I was pushing the same process value into two separate temporary tags. So now we need to create our message payload. So MSG payload it should build that up for us equals and then we open our wiggly brackets 
and it automatically puts the close in there for us. Now we have to define a tag. This is the tag that the end program is going to use, so either InfluxDB or IoT Hub on Azure. And it's, um, it can be a string, so we'll call this Vessel, okay, we'll give it a capital and a space. And this could be really anything you want, so it could be whirly gig, whatever. And we don't put equals, we put colon, and then it's got to be what is the process value that we're going to push into that tag. And in this case, it's going to be LV1. And you can see when I type in LV, look, it's got a list of what I can use. I need a comma to tell it I'm starting the next line, and then I can put the other. Uh, values in. So I have actually been lazy. I'm gonna, I'll put them into Notepad. I'll do a Control V. And you can see here now that the last line doesn't have a comma because the comma is telling you that you know another command is coming and we've got no more commands. So I'm going to leave it like that. That's fine. Um, what I'll do is put an error in here. So I'll change that to LV5. And you can see here now I've got a wiggly line because it's not happy with it, if I put a mouse over it, it cannot find the name LV5. So I'll put that back to 4. That's an easy one. This one, if I remove the equals, okay, now it doesn't like any of that. And I can see here, you know, I'm not really clear on what the error is. So that there's help, but some of it is just experience, which I haven't got much of, but I did spot that one. So once I've done that, I can click Done, Deploy. I go to my debug. This data, don't forget, is being triggered into global memory every one second. This is a manual operation, so I trigger it, and now I can see my process values. But because I put in the um, initial information into global, this code will work anywhere. So you can see here, I've been working under the function flow, if I go to my change node, I will delete this, but just to, to show you for completeness, I have exactly the same. I'm reading it from the global memory area, and if I click on this now, it will run. So it can run anywhere within my program on any of my flows, because I'm pushing my data into global memory area. So there you have it. There's many functions you can use the uh, the function node for because of the you know, the flexibility of using JavaScript. You can have basic maths functions. You can you can have loops in there, uh, but you're really moving on to to the next phase of Node Red. So what we're trying to do, we, as much as we can, is using the pre-built nodes. But this is an example where it's actually easy to to generate a JSON message payload using JavaScript in a function node. So I hope that was useful. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to click on the notification button and hope to see you again soon.